Well, from your report, Eric is obviously thriving, bonded, and developmentally on schedule. Sounds like DCF has done its job. I see no reason not to endorse this placement position and to schedule the uh, final hearing on the termination of parental rights. Excuse right. me. My apologies, Your Honor, but this case came up faster than expected. Uh, this is the custody hearing for baby Eric. Yes, Your Honor. I'm Thomas Horn. I'm representing the grandmother in this case, Mrs. Beverly Raymond. Did you file a motion, counsel? Yes, Your Honor. I filed a motion to intervene, which wasn't docketed. Intervene? Why? Mrs. Raymond would like to regain custody of her grandson. What? This is the grandmother who had the heart attack. Yes, Your Honor. My client was Eric's caretaker for six months. She's now both physically and financially able to provide for him again. When did you file this motion, counsel? Two weeks ago. I had a hearing this morning, and I just happened to look at your docket. I phoned Mrs. Raymond immediately. Clerk's office made a mistake. Judge, we need to provide a permanent home for Eric as soon as possible. Given Mrs. Raymond's failing health... My client's health is fine, as you can clearly see. And due to a generous life insurance payment after her husband's death, she's of substantial means. I'm going to continue this matter until evidence can be heard. In the meantime, I'm ordering parental assessments on both the Chases and Mrs. Raymond. Thank you, Your Honor. In the past 17 months, Eric has become a real member of the Chase family. He's established a close relationship with his big sister, Aliyah. He calls his foster parents, Mommy and Daddy. He's seen very little of Mrs. Raymond since her heart attack when he was six months old. Uh, what is your assessment of his relationship with his grandmother now? He was agitated being separated from his foster parents and appeared stressed during the interaction with her. My sense is that he doesn't have a relationship with her. That's because they won't let me. Uh, Mrs. Raymond, there'll be a time for you to speak later on. <laughs> Dr. Singer, isn't Eric's discomfort with Mrs. Raymond normal for any two-year-old who hasn't spent much time with his grandmother? Yes, it is. But with more time spent together, wouldn't it be fair to expect that Eric could establish a lasting bond with his biological grandmother? Possibly. And what about the importance of the shared cultural experience between Mrs. Raymond and Eric? I mean, shouldn't that be a consideration? You mean the fact that they're both African-American? Yes. And all that would go with that. I believe that what is important for a child is security, consistency, and love. And whoever can best provide that makes the best parent for a child. An elderly woman, 64 years old, hypertensive, diabetic, had a major heart attack. Given these facts, would you say that a recurrence is likely? If Beverly continues to reverse her risk factors, I would hesitate to put her in a high-risk category. Even so, best case scenario. What's Mrs. Raymond's projected life expectancy? It's less than 10 years, correct? Just start digging the hole right now, why don't you? Your Honor, may I say something? I may not be any spring chicken, but not one of us knows how long we have to be on this earth. Mr. Newman there might step off the curb tomorrow and get hit by a bus. I get your drift, Mrs. Raymond. Dr. Bittman, anything else? Only that I see no reason why Beverly Raymond couldn't see 75, 80 or beyond. She's a tenacious woman with a lot of grit and a good sense of humor. Well, that's self-evident. Thank you. Eric was my baby for six months. When he was hungry, I fed him. When he was tired, I rocked him to sleep. He was my little boy. My blood. He should be with me. This is first Easter. Clearly, you're still very attached to your grandson, Mrs. Raymond. Yes, I am. He's never been out of my mind, not for one moment. Mrs. Raymond, you also have a granddaughter, don't you? Aliyah, the little girl the Chase has adopted? Yes. Why did you surrender custody of her? That was four years ago. My husband was ailing. I couldn't care for both of them. It still breaks my heart. I lost her. There was no other family member who could take her in? Not at the time. Can you say that the situation has changed? 
What if you had custody of Eric and you were to have another health crisis? What's to prevent him from ending up back in the system? Eric would be raised in a community of people that love and understand him. And if I got sick, that community and the insurance money from the death of my husband would make sure he was well taken care of. But none of these members of the community are relatives? No. Not exactly. But they would be tied to him in a way no white foster family could ever be. I fell in love with Eric the moment I saw him. So much like my Elia, the same big brown eyes and same fat little toes. <laughs> and the two of them, brother and sister, are crazy about each other. Joey and I feel like <laughs> we have our dream now. <laughs> you know, a family. <laughs> and the thought of losing it is. <laughs> You know, Eric calls me mommy, and he doesn't care what color my skin is. He just knows that I'm the one there in the middle of the night when he wakes up crying, or picks him up when he falls down, or puts a Band-Aid on his skin knee. He's been my baby for 17 months, and to take him away from us and his sister is, is beyond cruel. But there are significant cultural differences. And I am aware of them, which is why we bring our kids to a black church and why a lot goes to an ethnically diverse school and have many people of color in her life. I am aware of my limitations as a white mother, Mr. Horn, but they should have no bearing on my ability to give my children unconditional love, a, a stable home, a father, and a future. Council President, Mrs. Raymond, Mr. and Mrs. Chase, thank you. Well, most children who come into my courtroom have no one to care about them. But this case gives us the opportunity to do something special, to allow it the best of, of two worlds. And if you all are as determined as you are sincere to do what's best for him, I see no reason not to take advantage of that. So I'm proposing a compromise. I'm granting custody to the Chase family with regular post-adoption visits for Mrs. Raymond. Now, I'm not stipulating the specific parameters of this agreement. I leave that to both parties. But I won't sign the decree until a proposal is submitted. Your Honor, my client is this child's grandmother. This state provides special consideration for grandparents. My client's rights are being violated. Mr. Horn, decisions that protect the interests of the child always trump someone's rights. This so-called compromise will create an incredible amount of confusion. Who's got final say, the Chases or Mrs. Raymond? Mr. and Mrs. Chase would remain the prime authority. And how does that allow Mrs. Raymond any kind of influence? Children need one clear set of directives, Mr. Horn. We are not splitting this child in two. I think this could be a win-win solution. Does that mean I get to see my granddaughter as well? It would seem patently unfair for one child to develop a relationship where the other one has nothing. However... Elias already adopted. She's outside the jurisdiction of this case. Well, that would be. But given the realities of the relationship, let's hope common sense prevails. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I think Eric's going to be a lucky little boy to have so many people who love him and want to be in his life. So discuss the schedule and report back to me. You can make this work. I'll schedule the case for review in three weeks. Let's take a 10-minute recess. Court recess, 10 minutes.